Today's video I'm going to start uh, cleaning the oil galleries. I have this hooks up to an air hose, put this end in the lacquer thinner, and uh, then you just squeeze it and hold it up to your oil galleries, you know, wherever and blow them out. That's what I'm going to use to blow them out. And I'm not going to video because that stuff will ricochet and spray everywhere and I don't want to get lacquer thinner on my camera. I might even back my truck out. I just don't. That stuff goes everywhere unexpectedly and I don't want to have something ruined so I am not going to visit video uh, blowing the oil galleys out. And they're galleys, I'm sorry, not galleries. I was corrected on that. <clears throat> there might be some some interesting things in there that you could consider art, but no, they're they are galleys. So I'm going to start uh, cleaning them out. Well, I'm just going to try so you can get a idea of what I do, but I just got that down in some lacquer thing. So, there, now it's blowing the lacquer thing. See how it blows that thinner right through the galler, galley, I mean? So, that is the easiest way I find to clean oil galleys. I think there's some in here, too. I might put a drain pan under the engine. See how that stuff goes everywhere? That's why I'm not going to video because I don't want to make a mess with my camera. So let me um, get the camera out of the way and I'll go to town and blow out all the oil galleys. Now that I'm pronouncing it correctly. Oh, and one other thing to that. Um, this is the part the drain plug threads into for the oil pan and that is stripped. The nut, the threads are coming out of it. So trying to find that piece doesn't exist. And to cut it out and weld in a nut or something would be cobbling it. So I found a brand spanking new oil pan that'll save me having to bead blast this and clean it up. Brand new bare metal oil pan, brand new coming for the engine. And just a little heads up, I found those metal, um, I'll show you. These are the metal heat shields for the exhaust manifolds and they're pretty rotted away. I mean, if I had to reuse them, I could, but I found brand new ones, brand new set. The right and left are different, so you, you know, you got to make sure you get the right and left, but they did not come in the gasket sets. It came with gaskets for the manifolds, but it did not come with this, so I got this coming too. And while we're on the subject matter of parts, I did locate a rebuild kit for the transmission. It comes with the Seals for here, the back, the front, you know, all the complete seals and gaskets, all the clutch packs, everything but the bands. And the bands are not available. If I need the bands, I got to have them re, uh, relined. But I think I'm going to just put the seals in the transmission and call it good. If it doesn't work, I'll take it back out and go through it. But I think the, really, truly think the transmission's fine other than it was leaking fluid around. It was actually this, this where it was leaking fluid, not, this is the shift, and there's a seal on the shift in the housing here, and it didn't look like it was leaking in between there. It looked like it was leaking in between here, and that's just an O-ring that goes between the two. But um, it's going to get new, all new seals. I don't want any transmission leaks. So, I, I, and as you can see, I've been putzing around, working at cleaning the case up a little bit more. Um, you know, when I put it back in the car, I want it to look new. So, I have been kind of putzing away, and when I have an extra half an hour or so here or there that I just don't feel like tearing into something, I just clean things. You know, it all has to be done, so I just go at it. This, uh galley goes the full length of the top of the lifter valley and lubricates all the cam bearings and when I was blowing it out a lot of crud was coming out of the um, 
cam bearing places where they lubricate. And this is squirting out a little bit where it lubricates the timing chain. And I just don't want to get the camera, so I'm going to pull the paper towel wire while I do this. Can you see the stuff coming? It's coming out of everything. It's even shooting up out of the cam bearing races in there straight up and out the main bearing races too. So that's uh, not really cleaning it out good. So I'm gonna um, flip the motor over and get the oil galleys from the other side too. The amount of stuff that came out of the oil galleys was nuts. That's looking through the where the lifters go so if I stick my finger down in there you can see in any one of the lifter holes that is the gallery or galley to the hydraulic lifters and I'm sticking my finger in that hole down there Let's see how it goes in between each lifter the full length of the engine and then this is another there's one two three right here and then a one here that goes down to the mains. This one, this one uh, comes from. I think the oil pump comes up here. Go feeds the mains and the cam and lifters. But they're all pretty cleaned out now. But you can see through the amount of stuff that came out was nuts. It was like a gray sludge and uh, naturally I stepped in the pan and sent the stuff everywhere but you know that's probably from pressure washing and whatnot but yeah there is a lot of crud in the oil galleys and there isn't any more so the next step I think will be um, installing the cam bearings and fitting the piston rings and you know I gotta set all the ring end gaps per cylinder so that'll probably be the next stop well I think it's cleaned up good enough ready for the cam bearings to go in now so the cam bearings are going in particular order in most all engines and this is the first cam bearing and as you see it has two oil galleys in it That's cam bearing number one, two, three, four, and five. See how they have a little bevel on them? One end. That's so they start in the engine block easier. Sorry for the... I got the exhaust ventilator on because it's been stinky in here from these solvents. It's cold outside so I have the garage closed but when you put this cam bearing in from the front of the engine block the bearing has to be within 0 .0005 to 0.020 thousandths from the front of the engine block here so you know it's quite a tolerance here you can see where the old one well no that's kind of machine beveled there but it's got to be in set just a smidge the front one from the front of the engine block. I'll show you the specs in the manual. So this is on the camshaft bearings and this is the size of the 352 cam bearings and it says right here all other engines. It says the the uh, 240 is a little different but the and I'm not getting grease on these. This is a used shop manual so it has grease on the pages um, it has a uh, number one bearing installed with the front edge 0 .005 to 0 .020 inches toward the rear from the front face of the cylinder block that's important so you get the oil holes lined up so I got the rear cam bearing in and then I realized I didn't push the right button on the camera so I'll video putting in bearing number two there. <clears throat> and then I'll put in that one and then I'll have to take the engine off the stand to do these two cam bearings. 
First thing I do is I smear some grease on the tool. Then the bearing can sit on it. Beveled side to where the goes in the engine this way. And then I'll put some grease on this side of the bearing. And then there's a D stamped in this tool. And just as a reference, I put the oil hole opposite of that D because I can see the D looking down in the engine and I know that that's pointing down. And then I'll start it and then I'll double check it. Now I got this bearing needs to go on this way. It's important you put that bearing on the installer the correct way around. I had it backwards. I'm glad I noticed that. I would have wrecked the bearing had I not noticed that. So that is pretty good opposite of a D. There's the D. There's the oil gal galley hole. So let me get this thing uh, in the engine block. I gotta make sure this thing goes in square, so I wanna start the little cone doohickey, and that goes like, like that. Now I'm just gonna tap it just a couple of times, so if I have to knock it out, I can. See, the little hole isn't quite exactly where I want it, so I'm going to just tap it back out. And get it right exactly where I want it. These things sometimes, you know, it turns on this tool, so you got to kind of really be careful because once this is against the black this will turn and this won't it's kind of a pain but just the way it is there's the D I'm gonna make sure it didn't I think I might just even, I'll give it one or two taps with the hammer. Sometimes you can just start them with your hand. See, now that's where I want that oil hole. So that's good. So now I can drive the, the bearing in. And the idea is to line your, whoops, see it's got to go in further, the oil holes aren't lined up yet, so tap it in a little more. And I'd say that's lined up maybe pretty, just driving in another ten thousandths of an inch. And it's installed. All right, all the cam bearings are in. This one's got about eight thousandths between the edge of the block and the bearing. I think that's, you know, or 0 0.008. It's pet spec is 0 0.005 to 0 0.020. So I wanted a little 
a little further than Titus spec. So that's in, and the oil galleries, I can't see, but they do line up. That one lines up with this one, and the other one lines up with one that goes in here, which goes up to the oil pump. Um, so it's all, all the cam bearings are in. I'm going to put the rear plugs in next so I can put it back on the engine stand. Alright, next is put the plugs in and you can see Ford used a sealer much like this originally when they installed this. It says to put a little sealer on here so I'll put it on the plug and drive it in and the same with these little plugs right here. Wipe it out with some black or thinner where the plug goes. I've already blown these out with lacquer thinner and compressed air, but it doesn't hurt to wipe them out just where the plugs go. Make sure there's no oil or anything on there and wipe the edge of the plugs. Okay. I'm just doing the edge of this. I'm not getting it down in there. Because I don't want to get it on the bearing. But I don't want it to leak oil either. So, Alright, I got them in. I ended up with that goo on my hands and then it was on my camera. and So that's why I didn't video it. I, when I brushed it on these little buttons, they were all over my gloves and there's no way I could turn the camera on. But you get the picture there and you just tap them in and I just took a socket and drove them down in there. I kind of messed up. I put the plug in upside down so I had to go chasing around for another plug and put it in the correct way. So yeah that was kind of glad I noticed that before I put it back up on the engine stand because that is not light. I was just standing here looking at it when I was all done and I thought you know what I think I put that plug in backwards and uh, I did so it's in the right way now now I'm going to get it back on the stand and that had to go find another plug apparently a lot of the Fords are well anyway the auto parts had one so no big deal well I got all the cam bearings in place the uh, plugs on the back I got a couple on the front to put in Oil galleys are all nice and clean. Next step will be, which will be tomorrow or the next day, will be install a camshaft and crankshaft. I gotta find my uh, plastic gauge for the crank bearings, and uh, you know, so I can make sure that they're all good oil clearances. But the cam you gotta put in first, so you don't hit the lobes on the bearings. You gotta be able to reach down in here to prevent it from. I don't want to nick any of the cam bearings. So I'll get the uh, cam in and the crank plastic gauged up. I either got to find my plastic gauge or go buy some new and then I'll fit the rings to all the cylinders. The ring end gap, if it's too tight, it'll, you know, expand and pinch and break the rings, score up the cylinders. So you got to have it, so, you know, you got to have the end gap set right. I'll uh, fit the rings to each cylinder so if the rings I fit to the cylinder will stay with the cylinder and so on and so forth down the engine and uh, then I can start you know basically reassembling the block and then when the heads are done I can finish the engine up and get it painted up it's actually moving along pretty reasonably quick so when I went to uh, just start videoing again I noticed goo grease and that gasket maker all over the camera so 
I guess I'm going to call it a day and go in and clean the camera up and, and uh, whatnot. So I don't know if I have grease on my face. Sorry if I do. But if you like the video, hit the like button. If you want to see this neat old galaxy resurrected and restored, please subscribe. And thank you for watching my videos.